uh, he worked for many years with the Aryavaidya Pharmacy or Ayurvedic Trust of Coimbatore uh, and is associated with several Ayurvedic bodies and uh, organizations both in India and in Switzerland. So with this, I will invite Dr. Indulal to give his talk for today. Good morning. Welcome back to the second day. Thank you, Michelle G. once again. And uh, thank you for coming back to listen to the second part of the lecture. Yesterday, as Michelle G. spoke, uh, we discussed about the structure of Sanskrit medical text and the way we approach it, or the way the prescribed way of uh, approaching it. Today, we will see about the knowledge uh, translation, how it is supplied, and how a detailed or thorough understanding of the Sanskrit uh, or the Shabda as it is uh, will help or optimize our practice application. And what we lose when we actually translate without actually carrying the essence of what is contained in the uh, Sanskrit word or sentence in that. Um, this comes, we spoke about the importance of the theoretical knowledge. And today we start with the importance of application or the practice. The meaning of this particular reference is that which, which is carried in almost all the texts says that by repeated practice or application of the, of the textual knowledge, we attain an inner eye which makes an effective treatment principles visible and says that it's not possible to differentiate between a good or bad diamond just by the theoretical knowledge. You need to have a practical experience also. So the qualities of an Ayurvedic physician, it repeatedly in all the texts, it says that someone who has understood the theory in its fullest in form with a clear understanding of the Sanskrit terms, who has internalized that knowledge, and then that not that alone, who has seen and experienced the practical application. So it's a correct balance of both which makes an Ayurvedic physician effective as a clinician. So to understand, uh, to discriminate between what is a good diamond and a bad, bad diamond, you need to have the Shastra Bodha or the theoretical knowledge. So when Shabda Pramana, what we saw yesterday, is understood in its fullest uh, meaning, it becomes Shastra Bodha, our knowledge about the science. And then comes the importance of darsana, seeing it in application, in practice. And third comes the importance of doing it by oneself. So that is abhyasana. So when these three together comes, the knowledge, uh, experience of seeing its application and the experience of applying it by oneself. So that combination makes one person, an effective clinician practitioner. His knowledge or her knowledge will be useful to people who are suffering. So that's how a, a savior of life, a vaidya, a physician is called as pranabhisara, someone who is able or experienced or knowledgeable to save life. See, it's, it's, it's a process. It starts with Shastra Vijnana. Knowledge about what is told in the text, Shabda Pramana. We saw that yesterday and we saw how it is attained. Also. The next comes the Artha Vijnana, knowing the meaning, the essence. The third is Karma Darshana or seeing its application. And fourth is Pravrti, doing it by oneself. So only when that theoretical knowledge, its application, the combination, it makes a physician uh, qualified to be known as the savior of life. Just mere theoretical knowledge, it says that keep such physicians at a far distance who speaks only theories and do not practice. Keep them at a far distance. And whatever they do, actually, is do not qualify as an effective or a proper uh, treatment. 
so that's the one way the importance of the application but if you look at if you trace back the pravritti or the action of a physician we find it rooted in the shastra or the shastra and the artha our focus hereafter would be on that how if we don't clearly understand the the text from a sanskrit perspective from an application perspective then we may miss many things there a certain things could be understood purely from a sanskrit perspective also even if you are not a a vaidya you are not a medical student you just have a thorough knowledge in sanskrit when you look at the uh, text you understand something more than what actually the the words or the sentence communicate in that have three examples here in that the first speaks about the three doshas three fundamental principles responsible for health and ill health in that vada pitta and kapha also known as vayu pitta and kapha if you read the first line you know vayu pittam kapha cheti trayo dosha samasata here grammatically you find that something that could be applied here as a grammar rule of grammar visarga sandhi it's not applied there so each of them are dealt separately vayu pitta and kapha if we, if we had if the author had applied visarga sandhi it was possible to construct that sentence as vayu pitta and kapha together it says that when it is not applied it shows the importance each one of them have separately that's how we need to understand the second again it says pishak dravyan upastada roki pada chadushte it spe- speaks about the four limbs of treatment a physician a medicine a physician attendant and a patient if you look here you find that here again pishak and roki the physician and the patient are told separately giving them a swatantra sthana that means independent roles to perform other two depends on the physician so these are the things which we understand even but without actually knowing the science a sanskrit scholar reads the text they will be able to understand something that is not there in the translation so not the third is it speaks about the the synonyms of health and disease sukha sapnakam arogyam vikaro dukhame vacha the simple a loose translation is that health is known as sukha sukha is happiness or pleasure in a superficial of meaning vikara dukhame vacha vikara is dukha but the it, the this synonyms are presented in a very peculiar way because sukha sapnaka varogya so arogya is has a name as sukha and vikara or disease is nothing but dukha more it is very categorically same here this is because absolute sukha or happiness is not possible while an absolute dukha or suffering is possible and sapnyakam that word the commentator explains saying that this is to be taken the word sukha should be should be understood in its a material sense laukika sukha artha so because for each yesterday someone was asking about uh, how various things could be applied as a medicine see for each for each individual the the concept of sukha or the parameters to measure the sukha are different in that so whatever falls into that individual's uh, definition or criteria will qualify to be called as uh, a health but when it comes to dukha which it could be told in an absolute sense in that because we we are always uh, in a vulnerable state we will see about that okay? and we will be actually going through fluctuations of uh, health so to have a sustained uh, sense of sukha or well being is not possible so we don't we don't take very definite rules to define what is healthy say that sukha if you are feeling okay you are healthy but if you are not feeling okay it categorically qualifies as vikara the same comes from say that uh, there is a um, instruction in uh, daily routines it said abhyanga macharet nityam that means you do abhyanga daily 
then when when we communicate we apply many things conditions and then we correlate and communicate but a sanskrit scholar will understand that as being presented in vidhi link which means it's like an order saying that you do oil application daily so that that was the sense of communication like say vidhi or nisheda you do it or don't do it so for a physician he uses many assessment criteria to say whether you can do it or not but for a sanskrit scholar it, it it is presented as a vidhi link as an order in that the translations okay, say that uh, this is few examples all all the slides are randomly selected because you just open any uh, translations you find certain things i have taken many things it, this could be approached in different manner i am using only one channel to for example sharira is translated as body it is body but the real meaning of sharira is something shiryate anena iti sharira something that is constantly in the process of decay or something that is being withered away that is sharira so when we understand that particular meaning we are understanding the difficulty or our responsibility in maintaining a healthy state of health so that's the reason why we repeated we are not always in a state of comfort after few hours we are feeling hungry if you don't eat the body is going to wither away we are feeling thirsty if you don't drink the body is going to wither away if you don't sleep so maintaining a a static nature of a, or a, a healthy static nature of the body is an effort because body as such is in the process of withering so that is shariram is usually translated as anatomy sharira sthana but it speaks about everything from the manifestation till death because it's in the process of decay it's a, it, it goes through its manifest it grow it gets sustained it get diseases it suffer from decay and finally death so that process is being explained as part of sharira sthana though but we speak translate it as the section dealing with anatomy of course it also deals with anatomy a little bit dosha translating it as humor do not communicate that it is dushna subhava dosha because dosha though they are the factors responsible for our health when they are in the state of balance they are responsible for ill health when they are out of balance but the name given to that particular factor is dosha it's in a negative sense that means it has got a nature to to contaminate to vitiate to spoil an ambience in that so when we understand dosha as something having that particular tendency we are also understanding the perpetual vulnerability they have and the consistent efforts needed to maintain that so it it has got that its nature is to undergo imbalance and something how do how do we do that we we are always on alert and our our effort needs to be sustained to maintain that problem the third is vata one of the dosha it is it is wind in a sense in that but a sanskrit when you assess it it comes from a dhatu va which means gedi gandhana and when a tan pratyay is added to it you get the word vata so but we when you look at the root meaning of vata we understand its nature of movement it's understand we understand its function of control over the senses and motor functions so that is elaborately what vata does to the body it's the only mobile factor inside it's responsible for our movement motor or sensory kaya chikitsa is usually translated as chikitsa you know it's treatment kaya chikitsa is translated as general medicine but the word kaya means antaragni the fire inside you basically speaking about the factor responsible for digestion and all the metabolic process and it means that the prime factor addressed in a treatment uh, protocol is to correct and maintain the digestive and metabolic function because ayurveda says that all diseases happen because of a dull digestive fire so when we understand kaya as fire or when we understand kaya as the inner fire factor responsible for transformations that way and when we say kaya chikitsa we understand that primarily focusing at the digestion and the metabolic process and we are only trying to strengthen the factor inside the body 
or correct the factor inside the body which will in turn take care of the system vasti is a treatment it's enema in its sense but vasti is the word for bladder so once upon a time the vasti was done enema was the medicine for enema was taken in the bladder of goat right now we don't use it the second meaning is that the effect of vasti reaches up to the bladder of the individual so when we understand that it also influence our pressure with which we push the enema content into the rectum of the individual by just enema we won't know that the another one is bhuda vidya i don't know whether you have read sometime back uh, uh, a leading institution started a post graduate course on bhuda vidya and then it was uh, people criticized shouted up on and then i think they finally decided not to go ahead with it bhuda vidya is some people translate it as psychiatry and it speak bhuda if you look at the meaning it is in spirit ghost demon all comes under bhuda and and if you look into the explanation it speaks about gods demons uh, and uh, uh, other spirit etc being the person showing the characteristic features of that one but the bhuda the meaning is being in that particular context it needs to be understood as a an altered state of being an altered state like altered state of consciousness so it speaks about a person showing characteristic features or the behavior of a godly being or of a uh, spiritual being or of a very violent nature or of a very uh, inert or idle nature it's it's primarily speaks about an individual showing an extreme characteristics of sattva rajas and tamas and then when you look at it could be from a possession state to uh, what to say personality disorder anything falls into this category but if you look at it it's not exorcism what's happening which only identifying individual showing certain characteristic falling into either sattva rajas and tamas three psychological types in that way. and it is not saying about exorcism anywhere it's a very logical rational treatment given of course the spiritual treatment is also included ritual is also included like what i said yesterday for people who are eligible for that or receptive for that so this is what needs to be understood in shalya tantra it says that you need to use vyakra mukha de or the face of a tiger de or simha mukha the face of a lion de. it's not that you you cut the head of Uh, a, a, a tiger or a lion and use it there it says that the instruments having those features are to be used yantra shastra there so we need to understand when it speaks about bhuda in that particular context what is actually trying to communicate it's not just possession and exorcism there it's not that roga translated as disease it says durujanti didat what which causes pain suffering that is roga and explain that ದೇಹ ಮನಸಿ ಸಂತಾಪೇದಿ ಇದ್ರೆ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟರ್ಬ್ಸ್ ಕೋಸಸ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಟು ಬಾಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರೋಗ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಡು ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ಡಿಸೀಸಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಯುರ್ವೇದ ಆರ್ ಸೈಕೋಸೊಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ರೋಗ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಡಿಸೀಸ್ ಸುಖ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಎರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ translated as happiness pleasure in it but su kha the word kha has got a significance here kha stands for space kha represents the channels in that because body according to ayurveda is not a, a static anatomical structure but a nutritive process and this process happens through various channels and that is that channels that open spaces through which it flows is kha so it says that a disease happens when there is kha vaigunya when the space gets altered when the space gets impaired either because of an obstruction or because of a, a stagnation or because of some deviation the flow is not happening properly this is a disease so sukha means a good space and its opposite is dukha that means a bad space because that's that's the real meaning of it so when we understand sukha means we understand the spaces inside the body are in a good state and when it is dukha 
we understand the spaces are not good so the correction the treatment principle to correct the way the strothus or the car the space if there is an obstruction we need to remove it in in fever there is an obstruction to the channels carrying sweat that's why a person do not sweat when the person has a high fever and when the when there is sweat when the channels open there is relief from the fever to give an example now coming to some translation i'm not giving who translated popular translations in there so this is incomplete it says that rajas tamas cha manaso dau cha dosha udahrudo there are two cha there in uh, in the translation only one cha is translated it says that rajas and tamas are considered as the two doshas of the mind nowhere in the sankirtan it speaks about two but there are two cha and if you translate it according to me it will be rajas and tamas are also the doshas of the mind that's the correct thing. that means there are something else along with it so that is vata pitta and kapha the three doshas which we dealt earlier which are responsible mainly for the physical health in that they also have an influence but primarily it is rajas and tamas secondarily it is vata pitta and kapha but when one sanskrit scholar looks into it who understand the paninian principle of cha they will be able to understand it without being explained by an ayurvedic scholar because when there is a cha it speaks about factors which are independent it speaks the second is that what is told first is primary and what comes after is secondary and the third significance of cha is that together they they perform a single function so that is exactly what is meant here in that rajas and tamas are the primary doshas responsible for the health or disease of the mind and vata pitta kapha which comes as the second explanation of cha is actually secondary to that and to, they all have independent function there and uh, together they have a single function together they are responsible for as uh, primary and secondary factors responsible for the mental health or mental disease in that but when it comes to the treatment it is not for rajas and tamas the treatments are for primary there the role changes there it is primarily for vata pitta kapha the physical because the route to the mind is through the body so we treat the vata pitta kapha and try to influence the rajas and tamas there it comes as the secondary thing here again it is incomplete if you look at it like uh, we spoke yesterday um, the very textually we speak about the purpose of ayurveda is to help an individual to accomplish purusharthas dharma artha sukha and so on in a very uh, simple sense we can say that this is meant for uh, perfection in life or uh, completeness in life in that so in indian philosophy it says that sense of imperfection is a disease and it is considered as a disease and it is sole cause of all miseries apurnam manyada vyadin karpanneka nidvanabhu so we are always in that pursuit of completeness of perfection so that perfection in this particular way it's told as dharma artha sukha dharma artha kama and moksha another way of explaining it but here if you look at in all other references it speaks about the four factors but here it speaks about only three dharma artha sukha sadhan and the translation only speaks, just translates it that to obtain dharma artha and sukha actually here in the real meaning is that sukha are of two types something that is immediate if you have a a pain you get take some medicine get relief that's the immediate state of sukha that you experience there is also that you are not ending there that when the there is atyantika sukha or the ultimate sukha which is needs to be understood as moksha or that state of uh, perfection in one way because when all other references like charaka it uses all the four thing here it speaks only about three uh, the the student may not understand the that is limiting the possibilities of ayurveda to him inadequate um yesterday you asked the question about how commercial models of ayurveda how how closer they are to ayurveda this is the answer for that uh, there are two things that are circled adhata and iha athada will not go into the details it says that now because you have you have prepared uh, you have uh, be, you have become ready to know this particular subject so we will explain to that so that means you need to finish certain preparation 
before entering into the study of this particular chapter or thing so that's the reason why the the shat darsanas or the philosophies of ayurveda is very important before learning ayurveda for example mind we were speaking about in that the most of the details about the mind do not come from the ayurvedic text it come from the preparatory philosophical text so when you say atha you have understood that much about the mind now i will explain more about it so you that preparation thing is there it's now translated as now it just will just ignore for time being what is circle second is ha it's a one single letter but carrying a very profound meaning it just translated this said atreya and other sages but the ha is not translated it's it ha it signify anukamba very tricky very categorically says i am communicating this out of compassion not out of bhala kamsha not out of expecting anything in return so the true messenger of ayurveda or true practitioner of ayurveda should speak and do things out of compassion and not out of expecting anything so whenever the expectation of the the seller is more pronounced you should actually doubt the uh, authenticity of what he or she is trying to communicate that see this is repeated imagine a student when he or she learns this presentation of knowledge in that particular manner the 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 most important lesson of medical ethics is driven uh, into his or her head totally irrelevant you this first of all sing anjalika is translated as en mouse not this at the rodan dinner which is a correct that that word has got that particular meaning but in this particular preparation of that particular medicine it speaks about a plate or a vessel which carry one anjali measurement anjali is when you cup your hand how much it can a palm can contain that much quantity to contain but here it is translated as an eng rod and totally irrelevant thing this is a typical example the grammarian speak in that is saindhava saindha namak it has got another meaning as force so when you sit in your uh, dining table and order for saindhava nobody will bring horse there they will bring the saindha namak there because the contextual meaning is that but when you are in a race course and order for a saindhava the people will bring a horse to you so what is the, there are many different meanings for the same word but what is contextually relevant that needs to be understood and here what what do you do with the young rodent there you are not you are supposed to keep it away from this particular person but that that is the translation incorrect you see it's it's the word mala it says that what is circle above is mala and what is circle below is its translation as impurities in that a mala actually what is contextually significant is not impurity it speaks about the dosha dosha has different synonyms dosha because it has got this dushana swabhava or to to go out of balance the other synonym is mala because when it is out of balance it can cause impurities in the body so here it needs to be understood as dosha not as impurities in that because impurities as such they fall into the category of dushya which is which are vulnerable to dushana or vitiation by the vitiated dosha so this cannot impurities cannot initiate a disease process there so doshas having the synonym of impurities can only do there another incorrect thing uh, this is the synonyms of agni I'm just telling how well we will understand that uh, the process uh, well so jata veta agni means that fire if the meaning of everything could everything could be translated as fire but if you go into the details we understand give it gives us the explanation about the nature and function of agni the fire inside our body jata veda agni means that which the flames go upwards jata veda means that with which we are born charaka says that when it is shanta when it is extinguished we die appitta app app means water pitta means fire so it's it's the elemental composition of fire so when we understand we understand its relationship with pitta dosha the fire principle inside the body it says that agneyam pittam the pitta is fiery in nature but it comes in a combination with water there vayu sakha that which is a friend of vayu inside the body the 
the the the fire which is doing the function of digestion is propelled or kindled by samana vada which is sitting next to is as a friend and then slowly encouraging and blowing the fire to initiate that hudap dahana hudap one it all speak, speaks about its digestive function right one it typically means that it takes what is offered to the fire to the devas in the body it get gets the digest uh, it performs the digestive function and takes the ascent to the ultimate energy or just so that's the reason why charaka he says that eating is like a ritual like a havan it's not to do ritualistically but to do with concentration and with purity and you do you take things in the right quantity in the right sense of that anala means something that is not satisfied that's the reason why we repeatedly get hunger in that P- periodic necessity periodic occurrence and organic necessity in that ashu shushkani that means immediately causes dryness emaciation in that so when we don't uh, it, hunger is a reflex a vega which needs to be addressed immediately and if you don't eat on time it it causes weakness damuna means again tiredness ashrayasha that means it eats what it actually depends upon and all the tissues which are take the hum- the body leaf form are actually nourished by the essence that is created out of the di- digestion of the basic food and the transformation of the dhatus or the tissue principles uh, the structural principles also happens because of the agni so the fire the the structures of the body depends on the fire but when we don't eat properly when we are fasting what happens it eats what it depends on. it eats away the dhatus so that's why fasting is considered as a a a medicine for obesity because it it eats what it actually creates pavaga means what it purifies ayurveda has got a purification treatment called as shodhana popularly known as panchakarma the first step is to kindle the agni to help it in the digestive process so that the purification process happens uh, properly next is krishanu that means even if it is in a very very dull minor thing it is available there is a possibility to slowly kindle it and making making make it even a spark we can convert it into a forest fire that's exactly what an ayurvedic physician does after the extensive intensive uh, cleaning process we have a process called samsarjana krama we starting from a very light diet slowly building up the agni so that the person is able to eat a normal solid food so this all becomes possible when we are uh, able to understand not just this is fire but the individual characters of each of this so the naming of the plant uh, there are uh, different types because it needs to be because you say that like an individual having different dimensions of uh, like a teacher or a practitioner or a son brother like that we need to understand a plant from different angles that's the way of understanding it in its fullest right? so you find a, a name of a plant having different uh, uh, reasons either it is in the traditional use or it it speaks about its uh, um, proper action or where it is actually ideal location of that particular plant uh, to identify the plant the morphological features or its comparison like they like resembling the feet of an elephant or the five fingers of a hand you find that leaf being explained like or the potency of the leaf so that that instead of giving a a single name binomial nomenclature of botany then tenospora cordifolia that is your identity you are giving a botanical identity to it but you are not understanding guduji the sanskrit name fully with that so when we say that guduji means it's the sanskrit word i am just translating something that helps us to overcome diseases vatsadani means something that is uh, likened by children as a medicine so something that is that could be given to them chinnaruha means it sprouts from even a cut piece of stem it, it sprouts a morphological characteristic to identify the plant it's tantrika because it can protect the entire family uh, from the health uh, problems uh, vishalya means if if there is a trauma or a pain induced to that or if it, there is a foreign body uh, the problems caused by a foreign body inside that it addresses all those issues jwara means fever jwarari means it's the enemy to fever a widely prescribed drug for fever conditions rasayani means it 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 take the rasa to the ultimate uh, goal that is ojas it's a rejuvenative in nature 
Vaya means age, Vayastha means it, it maintains youth. So when we understand Tinospora cordifolia, we are understanding its botanical identity. But when we are able to understand the synonyms, we are understanding the plant from different perspective and also to a great extent it's used in that. A, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet for Shakespeare. But for Ayurveda Ajarya, the names are very specific. Ajagandha will have the smell. You cannot have a different name. It will smell goat. Ashwagandha will smell uh, elephant. And Ugragandha for Leshun, which is for its strong smell. The names are very specific. See, these are few names again, the significant. Kutacha, it's Holarenia antidysentrica. It's an antidysentric medicine. Kutacha means that which grows in the wild during rainy season. So when you are able to collect it at during from that particular source during that particular season, it will be more effective. And it has got synonyms like Kalinga. It's a region uh, in Odisha, I think, Northeast uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, Valsaga in Haryana. There, you, when you get source this plant from those regions in the wild during the rainy season, you get the optimal result out of it. Kunkuma, you know, it is from Kashmir. That's the best. Pipali, it has got a Magadhi. It's in South Bihar. Parasigevani, Parasiga means Persia. Chandana, Malaya, it comes from, it should come from the, the hilly region. Of that. So there is a place in uh, Kerala near the border Tamil Nadu called as Marayur, where it's Malaya 5,200 feet above sea level. Where six months it is uh, summer and six months it is cold season, either because of rain or winter rain. That is the ideal uh, uh, height and uh, the geoclimatic conditions suitable to bring the best quality of Chandana. You can read about that place, Malayacha. It comes from such a place. Musta, Cyprus Rotentus, Varita. The one which grows near the water, they will have the best active principles meant for that particular uh, effect. Haridra is Kurkuma, you know, uh, Haridra, the turmeric. It has got a synonym called Nisha because it, it ideally it needs to be collected at night. And when it is collected at night, it has got the best uh, results. Some studies have also been conducted to prove that. Now coming to certain things in its application and that. This particular study published online, it it's compares a disease called as Pandu to iron deficiency anemia. In, in one way it is correct, but there are certain problems in that. So look at it. It says it says that uh, considering Panduda as the pro predominant sign, the disease is termed as Panduroga, the nearest correlation of iron deficiency anemia. And they have selected patients uh, from 1 to 16 years of age and whose hemoglobin level is less than 11 grams and who have uh, microcytic hyperocomic, all other conditions. And they have selected a drug uh, called uh, which contains a iron preparation. So the problem here well, we will see that. You know, it, it, this is published as, published as an effective study. You know. The problem is that it is not just uh, anemia. It's not just the reduction in the, the blood uh, hemoglobin count that actually uh, qualifies to be known as Pandu. It goes through this process of uh, pathogenesis where the doshas are involved with the pitta predominance. There is a dadu in affliction there. You know. There is affliction of the ojas or the ultimate energy principle. And there is, of course, less of rakta you want to call it as blood, and there is also less of methus, that is fat. The problem is that iron has got a, a scraping property and do not qualify to be medicine for people who are lean in nature. It's, it may be good for people who are obese. So here, in when you follow this pathogenesis process, where we consider there is less fat and you give a blanket prescription of iron uh, medicine, you are not doing justice to Ayurveda, and also you are not ethical there in the treatment. So we need to understand what is Pandu. We need to understand what is anemia. But always giving it a, a, a direct correlation and then applying that, applying that knowledge to select a medicine here will not be helpful there. So that's again the reason we need to understand or be familiar with the Shabda or the Aptopadesha and that. And there are also futile translations, Sanskritization. Because you see, we... If you look at it, see, for example, here, Stani Gasatnyaharan, because local anesthesia, and nothing to do with Ayurveda except the Sanskrit word. Because it is, it, in order to adopt something from the modern medicine, 
if it is ethical you can do it by giving the same sanskrit or english or latin names but there is a tendency to sanskritize that to give it an ayurvedic uh, appeal which is absolutely futile in nature few things you can see if you see the list of uh, the surgeries which are permitted to ayurveda you can find lot of translations like this happening which is neither helping ayurveda uh, nor making it uh, uh, effective there this is again rajana sharir kriya sharir it's nothing but anatomy and physiology that's not the way ayurveda understands the body it's mula siddhanta fundamental principles cover everything there but we have it as two different topics in that so these are not inseparable the st- structure and f- function it's it's all there inside the drivya ben and see sapnya garan anesthesia it's nothing but teaching modern but giving it in sanskrit name in that chaya evam vigiran chikitsa radiology and radiotherapy i don't have to tell you are already already shaking your head okay uh, as conclusion i would like to say that um, whatever being said and done that there is a tremendous responsibility in the student there and there is also a stand to have for him or her to take a stand for the the science and the knowledge there this is what i would like to do as a conclusion so there is saying that uh, there is nothing the first sentence edihasti tadanyatra enne hasti nadu whatever that is there in this text is there outside and whatever whatever that is not there is not there that means this contains everything you wanted to know so how is it possible there it's it's not possible but there is a way to do that that's why it says that this learning process should help the individual to attain vidya vitarka and vijnana vidya is the textual knowledge vitarka is shastra adhishtita uha poham a mode of thinking based on what is told in the text and then vijnana means shastra andarajna with that shastra knowledge with that thought process uh, initiated by that understanding you develop a quality or uh, eligibility to understand what is told not told in the text so unless we don't do that we will not be able to master the science there it very clearly says that uh, it is that this is good for all three levels of intelligence they say that hina madhya and utkrishna somebody having a very uh, low level of intelligence having a moderate level of intelligence and a superior level of intelligence so you find that you find people falling into these three categories in there they say that whatever that is told in the text explained is to be taken by the a lower intellectual person as the golden rule for practice and for the superior level this is only examples he or she has now reached a level where it could be improvised it could be applied in the way only such a person can rewrite the science in the way we discussed yesterday so whether to remain at that lower level or to slowly graduate to the higher level that is the responsibility and there is a way to do that and to represent the knowledge and the science as defined by ayurveda and not by the other system of things here it's a veda is translated as knowledge but it says that even things which is beyond the power of observation and inference but useful for the individual for life that qualifies to be called as veda veda when we say we won't we may not be able to translate it fully but still you can show that this is useful in that so when i represent science if i cannot explain anything certain things but i can but i can show it the action then i qualify to be a representative if i can only speak then i don't but if i can show the action then i qualify to and the way the shastra is also defined is in a different manner it says that what is being shasana means it's like a mother uh, instructing a teacher in that, or or a student in the child so what educating an individual for a healthy living the helping him or her to overcome the disease condition that is why it is known as shastra that's different from the word the when you translate it as science right so with this uh, i will conclude and uh, we will uh, have some questions thank you very much once again uh, for the patient listening